So as you know, LGBT people are very oppressed, so incredibly oppressed and persecuted in this country. Uh, but at the same time, the LGBT acronym keeps expanding because people are so desperate to, to, to invent some new LGBT identities so that they can be a part of the club, so that they can be you know, involved as well, um, or to bolster their resume within the club. They'll, they'll make up new identities to be a part of it. See, I've never heard of an oppressed group that functions exactly like that. Like, can you think of any historical example of a, of a group that's persecuted, and meanwhile, people who aren't in the persecuted group are actually pretending to be in it just to get themselves a dose of that sweet persecution. Help! Help! I'm being repressed! I can't think of any example of that historically. I don't think... So this this is unprecedented. Um, and the other possible explanation is that LGBT people aren't persecuted at all, so I'll let you d- determine. What? No! Anyway, as part of this expansion, we now have something called pansexuality. And pansexuality is a really uh, sought-after identity these days. It's one of the newest things. Hot off the presses. People are, uh, are really into it. Celebrities are coming out as pansexual. Uh, left and right. Everyone is pansexual all of a sudden. So that raises a question, which is, what the hell is a pansexual? What the hell are you? Well, a pansexual, as far as I understand it, is someone who's attracted to either sex. But isn't that the same as a bisexual? Well, you might think so, but apparently not. We're told these are two different things. Um, How are they different? What's the distinction? Well, to answer that question, I think we have to go back to consult the wise sages of uh, TikTok who are experts on many things, but especially on um, all sexual matters. And uh, we've got a few videos here kind of explaining what pansexuality is and how it's different from bisexuality. And I thought this was just a good, good learning opportunity for all of us. So let's uh, let's start watching the videos. Bi versus pan in 30 seconds or less. Bisexuality is the ability to feel emotionally, physically, or even sexually attracted to more than one gender. This can be two, four, six, eight, or even all of them. This can be with or without a preference. Pansexuality is the ability to feel attraction regardless of someone's gender or sex or gender expression. Also explained as the ability to feel attraction to all genders without a preference. Look, I made you a chart. What? Okay, so so they're literally just the same thing. Did am I having a seizure or something? Or didn't she just repeat herself? It's exactly the same thing. Sorry, wait, no, 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 no. Bi is the the ability to be attracted to anyone of any gender, and pan is the ability to be attracted to anyone regardless of gender. I think that's the distinction she made. Uh, you see it? You see the distinction? Um, me neither. I don't see it either, um, because there isn't one. You know, it's just two words for the same thing. And there's a lot of that in the LGBTQ XYZ acronym, a lot of the same thing repeating over and over again. Same for the 192 genders. It's just sort of like the same thing over and over again, because in reality, there are only two. But um, I don't know. Maybe she just did a bad job of explaining it. So let's uh, let's let's watch another one. Pansexual and bisexual are the same thing. You just got to get over these years of, you know, I got to get over my years of internalized biphobia. I was bi for literally three years until I realized that I'm pan. If you don't know, this video is directed at me. So, hey, bae, thanks for the even more clout than I already have. Also, the likes to comment ratio already, amazing. Let me explain bisexuality and pansexuality to you because you obviously need a lesson. Bisexuality versus pansexuality for dummies. Here we go. Bisexuality. Oh, I think that girl's attractive. Oh, I think that guy's attractive. Oh, I think that non-binary person's attractive. Pansexuality. Oh, I think that person's attractive. Oh, they're a girl? Okay. Oh, I think that person's attractive. Oh, they're non-binary? Okay. Oh, I think that person's attractive. Oh, they're a guy? Okay. Do you get it? Bisexuality, attraction to more than one gender. Pansexuality, attraction to anyone regardless of gender. It's mainly feelings-based and personality-based. Thanks for the panphobia. Thank you. First of all, what is it on TikTok with the, uh, with the cackling they're always doing? <laughs> These girls on TikTok... I don't want to make any assumptions, but these girls on TikToks, so they, they, they're always uh, cackling. I'm not sure what that is exactly. And why do they always edit the video so that it cuts out the last word they said before the end? But anyway, panphobia, she says. Yes, we have panphobia now. There are people out there who have a phobia of pansexuals, apparently. I mean, sure, yeah, I run into this thing all the time. I, I, haven't we all seen people running through the streets 
Oh no, the pansexuals are coming. It's a pansexual. <laughs> On second thought, I haven't run into that at all because um, nobody can have a phobia of pansexuals because that's a made up thing. It's like being afraid of a pansexual is like being afraid of Peter Pan. It, it's, it's an imaginary thing. But let's keep going here. Maybe we could find a video that makes sense of all of this. And um, I'm already just looking at the image here and I feel like this is a person who can illuminate and enlighten us all. Let's watch. Guess what, F my patience has run out. Pansexuality is not inherently biphobic. They are both valid sexualities, both of them. And while yes, I have seen pansexual people use that label for questionable reasons, they pretty quickly get it once you explain things to them. They do. And not only that, but do you know who likes to use specific or micro labels? Neurodivergent people. Sometimes we just have to do whatever we can to feel safe and comfortable. And using a more specific label can be our outlet for that. If you took all that energy you spend calling people biphobic and saying they're performing bi erasure and just educated them, there would be less biphobia. There would be less bi erasure because you've explained it and people will know the difference. I've f***ing had it with you guys. Jesus f That was a uh, safety pin in his, hers, that individual's face, right? That was a safety pin? That's what I thought. Anyway, uh, pansexuality is not inherently biphobic. Did you hear that? Pansexuality is not inherently biphobic. And this settles the age-old debate. I think it was, uh, it was in fact, uh, Aristotle who was the first to postulate that pansexuality is not inherently biphobic. So I'm glad that we've established that. He also says that we need to, or, or rather uh, the, the individual, I, I honestly really have no idea, but this person says that we need to fight by erasers. I'm not sure what a by eraser is. It might be the kind that erases both pencil and pen. I'm not sure. Somehow I'm just feeling more confused the more that we watch. Let's try one more to see if uh, maybe this will finally make everything make sense for us. What's the difference between omnisexual and pansexual? Omnisexual people like all genders. While pansexual people like people based on their personality. So yes, they both like all genders. But gender is more relevant to omnisexual people than pansexual people. Most of the time, pansexual people are blind to gender. While most of the time, omnisexual people are not blind to it. Comment any genders or sexualities you want me to explain and compare. Like for per five. So now we got, now we have omnisexual too. So we got bisexual, pansexual, omnisexual. All to describe people who are attracted to either gender, or regardless of gender, or inclusive of gender, or in spite of gender, or whatever. This cannot possibly get more redundant, or arbitrary, or absurd. You beg him. I'm demisexual. I only feel sexual attraction when I form an emotional connection. If there's no strong bond, it's not an option. Get to know me. I'm demisexual. Yeah, you're a woman. In other words, so you, you want to have a strong bond with someone in order to be attracted to them. So that's just like every woman that has ever existed. You just call yourself that. That's fine, too. Um, so, OK. You know, I said I'm more confused the more that we watch these, but I'm actually not. I'm, yeah, that's, I'm, I'm being facetious. I know exactly what's going on here. It's not confusing at all. People have defined their identity and meaning and purpose and entire personality and their existence by these sexual labels. And this is what happens when you do that. I mean, the ironic thing is that, you know, they're, they're trying to escape labels, escape what they call a rigid binary. And they can't escape it because the binary is natural. It's, it's biological. But what they found in, their, in their, their flight from labels is a whole bunch of additional labels. So now they're more labeled than they've ever been. And they're arguing with each other over the finest little distinctions um, and I guess they take comfort in that because it is easier to adopt a label than it is to develop a personality and find actual meaning in your life. Also, as we've seen in some of these videos, having a label like this gives you an excuse to dress like a character from a Tim Burton movie. There's white things in the air. And that, in the end, I think is the real point. 